Today I want to speak about Gay Hinnom. And uh, today is Shavuos. And I have a scripture here from Yeshayahu. It says in the last verse of chapter 30, for Tafeh, that's what you pronounce it in the Hebrew, is ordained of all, yea, for the king it is prepared. He hath made it deep and, and large. The pile thereof is fire, ash, and much wood. The breath of the Lord, uh, the, the uh, neshama, the breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, this is gofrit, doth kindle it. Now here we have in the valley of Gehinom, outside of Jerusalem, southwest part of Jerusalem, you have a pagan site of worship. And uh, the, uh, the name of it is Tafeh. And it's uh, Tafeh Tafeh. And in uh, the English Bible, it's spelled T O P H E T. Now, friend, today is Shavuos. 49 days ago, if Yeshua had died, today we would be in the base of Mikdash in the Ulam Shlomo preaching, filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and preaching. Why did the Shulhim risk their lives? Why did they go in there and preach, even though they knew that the very same thing that happened to him could very well happen to them? They could be arrested by the temple police, tortured, and for all they knew, put to death right on the spot. How could they even do this? Where would they get the courage? And, 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 and why? Why was it so critical to risk their lives? Friend, I don't want to sound facetious here, but I want to tell you something. Yeshua HaMashiach, he knew what he was doing. He knew that Isaiah 53 said that Hashem had to look upon him and upon the travail of his nephesh and be satisfied. And that satisfaction was important for our justification. It says, my righteous servant will justify many. Now, to be justified means that God is satisfied, that you're, the, the penalty has been paid, the kapora is, is there, the timurah, the exchange. Look at Ruth chapter 4 verse 7. You will see this is the timurah, this is the exchange, the substitute. You see, I am guilty, I am a sinner, and, I, and all of this terrible gehinom wrath uh, I am definitely uh, deserving of. And God's justice requires it. His, his justice cries out for it. But Moshiach took that, that terrible, tra with his own soul, his own nephesh, the travail of his soul satisfied the Moshiach. If you read Isaiah 53, the last four or five verses, you will see what I'm talking about. And you will see that this Gehinom, this fire, this, out, this city garbage dump where the fire was burning continually and perpetually and forever. This is why all the prophets, starting uh, from, from uh, the uh, Tanakh and going forward, they all preached about Esh Olam. A voice was crying out in the wilderness about the, 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 winnowing, the winnowing fork would be in his hand. And, and he would he would bring a terrible fire, and he was he was crying out uh, uh, in the spirit of Eliyahu for the Bnei Yisrael to turn to Moshiach and have Teshuvah to escape this fire. And friend, I'm telling you today that Gehinom is real. I know what the wrath of God feels like, and I know that that God wants to keep me in, in the, on the straight path, and I know that I must keep myself in the love of God. And I'm praying for you today that you will uh, seek the Lord while he can be found, that you will search the scriptures, that you will see there is a terrible judgment to come, a terrible Gehinom to fear, and, and a God who is not willing that any should perish. Could you pray with me right now? Would you just bow your head right now? And, and just say, dear God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
Save me from Gehinom. Save me from, from the sins that have brought me to that point. Not the sins that I do, but the sin that I am. Not the sins that and I do, in Yeshua's sins name, I cry out to him. In Yeshua's name, I cry out and I ask him I to, deliver to deliver me as my Goel Redeemer, my, Redeemer. my Savior, my Moshiach, the Moshiach Ben Dovid. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.